Okay, th th there's one work I want to show everyone. I, I don't know if you had seen this, right? So this one speaks to me personally. And so when I grew up in early Cartoon Network days, where it was Barbie and Ken that was advertised all the time. So I ended up liking Barbies. Like it was a thing for me. I still do like Barbie. Like Barbie's <laughs> awesome, <laughs> right? And um, I remember growing up and telling my friends that I wanted to, you know, have a dollhouse of my own. And it was not a palatable <laughs> conversation. It was never a palatable conversation, right? They're like, dude, you're a guy. Why are you, why are you interested in having a doll, right? Um, and I think that qu when I think about it in retrospect, and I, I didn't grow up to be any of the things that they assumed that that would have led to, right? And, you know, um, that speaks to this, comes back to this painting. What I was trying to allude to is, in this painting, sorry, I have to open it up again. Um, you have this character coming out of the box, which Julius explained to me is the box of conformity mm -hmm. that everyone has, right? Society puts you in this box and then you come up. But you might want to speak to this because I want to relate it to this painting eventually. Okay. Yeah. So please, um, maybe a minute and then I'll okay. say how I tie it to this and then we'll move to the Fifty Shades of You. Okay. Awesome. So uh, this piece is the piece that captures the whole essence of um, boys are flowers or boys can be flowers too for me um, because of what it represents, uh, the simplicity of what it represents and the magnitude I'll just of the, the... Hold it for everyone so they can appreciate and the, it. <laughs> and and yeah. the magnitude of its meaning. So growing up as well, I liked Barbie and um, I was bullied into not liking Barbie anymore. Uh, because of I wasn't bullied though. I still like Barbie. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did agree to be bullied. Yeah, yeah. yeah the child that yeah. survived. <laughs> the child that survived, yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately for more boys than the ones that survived, um, a lot of us got bullied into not liking certain things like Barbie for example. Like you see a, a boy cannot be seen wearing a crop top without assuming the worst. This one is gay. I beg, carry give, I come off my uh, side, and all of that. So basically, you explained it by saying that imagine from the box of conformity is me um, reminding myself that I'm still a man, that I'm still a king, regardless of the um, ways that I choose to um, carry myself. As long as um, the values that make a human are still very deep within me, as long as the values mm -hmm. that um, affect humanity positively are still um, very, very um, evident in my life. I think that how I portray myself um, physically to a certain extent is nobody's business and should be nobody's business and people should be embraced for their choices. So I, I saw a video of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, by the way, is my, the biggest influence on, on my art. And um, I saw a video by him, I think it was Oprah who interviewed him in that video, and she was asking him about how he feels when people refer to him as Waku Jacko. And you could see the art in his eyes when he said it's so painful when people call him Waku Jacko that no one should be called that, that he's not Waku because he dresses in a certain way. He's not Jacko, like he's not a Jacko, like why do people call him such names? Because of how he projects himself, because of how he carries himself, it's just mood like someone was asking me okay it was you who was telling me that i, I looked really um, corporate corporate yeah. i felt underdressed when i met him this morning <laughs> so and i was explaining to him funnily that i, I dress according uh, based on my mood tomorrow i might have the same interview and i'll be wearing shorts for this same interview it's just the way that i feel so imagine someone boxing me in this attire and saying that julius is a corporate person because you're meeting me for the first time I'm sorry, you're going to be shocked because you see me tomorrow and I'm looking like a riffraff. <laughs> because that's how I want to express myself. So it, it's absolutely shouldn't, you, sh you shouldn't box people in your own limitations. How you have decided to view life shouldn't be the lens through which you view other people. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, cool. that's what it's about. Okay, just to tie it down to, this will be my final thing about uh, this particular 
boys can be flowers to discussion because it's a very interesting one to me. I personally ask myself this question every day. What does it mean to be a man? And how does society sort of shape masculinity? And then why, what are the things that we can do away with that are harmful? And what are the things that we can do with that are helpful, right? And then this particular painting, so when I saw it, I, I, I wasn't really thinking about much. And uh, so I asked Julius what he meant. And he explained to me, he wanted to put uh, the pink collar out there. Like, so you see this guy who's with his Nikes, you know, I mean, everyone knows Air Force Ones are like, what's the, like, very cool guy, you have a pair of Air Force Ones. And when he, after he explained to me, I started thinking that, like, you know, because it's the same thing with insecurities, right? So whenever an insecurity is, um, or when I, whenever any insecurity you have is poked, you learn to project the image that sort of puts that insecurity down so that the world doesn't get to, to see it, right? And then I looked, so I asked him, like, so it just became very clear to me that does the blue gilet cover, is that like the character projecting this hyper-masculine, deep down I'm a, a bit more tender than you think that I should be, um, but I mean, I've got this covering that I'm, that I wear every time you, I mean, it's larger than everything is padded. Um, I have this um, image of masculinity that fits into what you think I should be like. So my question will be, um, one, what is your take on um, projections of masculinity in society? Um, what would be your um, key sort of advice because like, if, if you've listened to or if you've heard from everything he said it's clear that this this sets of paintings are not just i mean paintings just so that you can enjoy them they're paintings that are meant to ask questions of you the viewer and they're paintings that are meant to make you think so from if you were to give a sort of advice of some sort um what will that um, be in terms of one are you asking people to challenge their masculinity that could be a you know um starting point i don't know but it would be good to to give what like what would be your giveaway from all of this to say as you're leaving this is what i want you to take with you and then i might be wrong you might i mean i don't think that asking putting things out there means that you must be right but it might just be like to say okay this is something to think about and then you know just take it and go yeah so it'll be good to hear from you okay thank you yeah so i think um i have a food for thought for anyone who has interacted with this body of works in in my opinion is to we discover our empathy to ask ourselves again What's more important to us? One of my favorite teachers growing up had this famous saying, it is, it is important to be, no, it is nice to be important, but it is more important to be nice. So I didn't fully understand the meaning of that until very recently. And I think this is something that we should say to ourselves every time. Before you make that judgment, before you criticize that person, have you asked yourself if perhaps you are the problem? And also, in the way that conduits exist, every conduit has a pre-existing content. And when another one goes through it, it mixes. So, whatever you are projecting, already has an underlying bias. So that bias is what I'm asking you to question with this body of works. Like, are you sure that this judgment that you're passing to this person that you're meeting for the first time, perhaps, are you sure that it's not based on your bias or your, an undertone of um, so, uh, societal constructs that has groomed you to this point? And also, so that we can create an enabling, uh, to, to create um, an enabling society 
um, where boys can be more human, where we can suppress and mitigate toxic masculinity, where a man feels like he has to be, he has to eat a woman to be more masculine, he has to drink or smoke to be more masculine, to, he has to do certain things or dress in certain ways to be ma more masculine. So to my food for thought for us would be to ask ourselves these questions every day as we go on. Because these are the questions that I find myself asking myself recently. I am not, I've not broken away from the stereotypes myself. I, I still have biases that I deal with myself. But these are the questions that I ask myself. Even after I pass judgment sometimes, I still find myself going back into my closets and asking myself, okay, that's thing that you said earlier, perhaps mm -hmm. it's not entirely right. So let us ask us, let, let's, let's allow ourselves to be wrong, mm -hmm. in okay. essence. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. So I will now go into the softer part of the <laughs> um, exhibition, right? Um, Fifty Shades of You. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, I think we can all even sort of deduce from how soft-spoken he is that this is a person that doesn't like talking. Right, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I wanted to say because I'm just going to open some pieces. So I noticed um, when I saw the brochure for this, the first thing that came to mind was this is a guy that normally doesn't paint figures, right? He just paints bodies, and like I said earlier on, he just used to paint headless figures, and. I realized that he was. Um, okay, I realized that he was um, now putting himself in the paintings. So one, I, the first question I want to ask is, when artists paint themselves, me I think is ego. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> it'll be interesting to know um, for a shy person, like, okay, is this like, okay, everybody, I'm here, you can do nothing about this. <laughs> You know, and then, and then you must, because you have half of your face, right? So I want to say this thing. I'm bringing it from my own opinion or from my own perspective, and then I'm going to suck you into my own perspective, <laughs> and you're going to accept it to be what I've said. What was your... I know you're, <laughs> you're laughing, right? But it was really interesting to see. So, like, what's your... What's the reason for this one? Flip in direction, right? That's one. And then two... What is the overwhelming motivation that has um, pushed you to now say, okay, you know what, I'm going to put myself out there. And then there are ideas that I have as a person and there are things that form who I consider myself to be that I think that everybody should know about because, I mean, I've looked at it, I've asked the questions and it's just like, okay, this is coming from how I am and I want to tell people that, you know, so it'd be interesting to know um, your own um, uh, to get an explanation as to why and then the motivating push okay thank you so my favorite lecturer in school uh, told me once uh, she said there is a thin line between narcissism and complete utter self-doubt for an artist so it is finding the, the, finding the balance in between those two things. That, that's, it's in between there that an artist's uh, creativity lies. And I found myself dealing with that acute self-doubt oftentimes. So me presenting myself, being this vulnerable in such an open space. Mm -hmm. I told someone on the opening of the exhibition that I feel so naked because <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a display of my myself yeah. all around like yeah. it's, it, it was intimidating at yeah. some point yeah. and everyone was just like this is you this is you this is you I'm like yeah it's me it's me yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yes I wanted to I read somewhere that um, human beings often in our naivety we often think that our, our experiences are exclusive to, our, to ourselves mm -hmm. so but they are not so I wanted to talk about these things that are so delicate mm -hmm. and so um, so sensitive, mm -hmm. but who, I thought to myself, who was the best muse that I could use, mm -hmm. if not myself? Mm -hmm. So nobody can tell me that 
I am not allowed to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I use someone else's um, image, you can tell me that, well, I don't feel this way. Why yeah. do you use my image? Yeah. But yeah. this is me. This is me telling you my truth. Mm -hmm. So if I'm welcoming you into my world to see how I think. So mm -hmm. if this imagination resonates with you, beautiful, mm -hmm. then our pipes have connected. Yeah. But if they do not, then beautiful, then in a way you have reacted to the energy yeah, that yeah. I have. Yeah. But either way, we have found a, yeah. a, a meeting yeah. point. Yeah. And that's why I chose to use myself as the, the muse okay. for the exhibition. Okay, so I have one last, um, I mean, this has been an interesting talk. So I have, I've been told I've run out of time. <laughs> it could have gone longer than this. <laughs> I guess we'll still have a conversation after this. Well, okay. my final question would be, um, you've moved into sculptures right which is now um, which to me i now think is even more imposing for a shy person like yourself that i've made a sculpture of myself i'm going to put it in people's houses and whenever they see it <laughs> like <laughs> they're going to remember jesus agbaje right <laughs> so uh, it's it's been so one uh, two things i wanted to ask will be one um what's what's informing the move from you know two-dimensional work to three-dimensional work and then um, that's one and and then how how has that process been for you as an artist like I mean it's it's a new medium and what's been your experience with, with it and then um, what are we to expect um, going going forward thank you so uh, first and foremost I'd like to say a huge thank you to Akim Yala Ahmed um, who was just there. He was of tremendous help in the realization of these ideas. He was a big help. At some point I almost gave up. But mm -hmm. He was there, he was grinding in the studio mm -hmm. and you know, um, polishing and all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a daunting process as far as I'm concerned. It was a new um, path that I had not explored before. So. It was tough as expected, yeah. but I wanted to take my ideas from the two-dimensional surface and bring them into um, the 3D world where people can interact with them yeah. in the round yeah. and also um, create um, a seeming life, immortalize these ideas okay. in a way. Okay. And that was what um, informed me, you know, yeah. delving into okay. the sculptures. But going forward, I intend to make more of them. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, in my head, my, the next presentation of the pipes that bind us is probably going to be an all sculpture exhibition okay. uh, without paintings. So um, it's going to be challenging, but yeah. um, it's something that I'm excited about. Yeah. So interestingly, I think we have an idea into what his next move will be. Um, I'm, I'm done with my own questioning. At the moment, so I'll just, uh, if anyone has questions, please, uh, the artist is present, and then you can, you can grill him better than I have. <laughs> just a comment, actually. Okay. Um, I mean, he spoke about vulnerability, and um, sometimes, as you remember, we don't want to be vulnerable, but we feel like, you know, people are seen it all, and I think there is a power that comes with being vulnerable, that people can no longer have any hold on you again. So what you have just done is to just express yourself and vulnerability can be from a place of power. So what you have done is just being a powerful thing that you are, being able to express yourself. So you know, you're not attacked because of your expressions or because of your personality. I, I'm just intrigued by all of your expressions and I, and I think I enjoy the conversation, kind of very sound, very, very sound. I feel like, I wish that we had more people here that feel like um, uh, it's such an intelligent conversation. I feel like people should hear, and um, I mean, big thanks to the, to the news. I, <laughs> I said we were drilling you. <laughs> but okay. uh, and I think your responses were very, very intelligent and very sound. I mean, thank I have so much to take from this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. That's, that's my mentor, by the way. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Any questions? Sir? So, Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, okay, I tried the first time, the last time. You didn't answer me, so I'm back again. Every time we meet, I will ask you a question until you eventually answer me. Um, no, it's, it's, it's the, the head that you're talking about. It's the head that's nice. It's very, very, for me. Yeah. I'm probably the oldest person. Yeah. So, 
I look back a while, and I'm worried about what goes on now in society, Nigerian society. And I, I read this as you're trying to pass a message to all of us to show more empathy, to be more concerned about the things that, that are not visible, that are not material, those things that we are carrying about. You know, mm -hmm. I see a lot of restlessness in the quest for materiality, mm -hmm. materiality of the society. And um, what I just see in this is that just the head and what goes on and what should go, go on in a man's mind. mind. You know, Subtle, um, natural, um, effeminate, so to speak, you know, uh, things that we should carry about, you know, that uh, we should disperse and make people catch bits and bits of that. You know. So, uh, for me, that the head is not there, it's, it's very destroyed. You know. mm. The tendency is for you to begin to look at how beautiful how the, an image is. Yes, yeah. You know, when with the pipes coming on, you're trying to connect mm -hmm. to humanity in a very positive way. You know, and um, you see the flowers, the plants, and all of that. You know, it's not a cultural ex um, exhibition of you know, masculinity in this, in this climate. You know. so, I see some activism in the kind of message that you have to pass out. And that is very pressing to me. Thank you, sir. Very, very welcome. So Thank, you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I have a question? Yes. Very quickly, I, yeah. mean, I, I think it's also very important that Julius also tried to amplify uh, men's mental health. Interestingly, the amount of Julius. Men's mental health, yeah. Men's yeah, yeah. mental health. And, you know, uh, there's so much that men actually carry in their minds. And then you know, we just we just man up, but they die inside. Yeah. We just man up, and then I feel like um, the deadliest is just like I mean, a way of escape. That's mm -hmm. where I feel. Mm -hmm. So imagine when you take a bottle of coke and that is covered, and you shake it. Yeah. You post. Yeah. Right. So to have a release, you have to just compose it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm seeing is a release mm -hmm. for men's mental of like you know you can be a man and enjoy nature without people thinking all the way. Like, mm -hmm. ah, are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm seeing with flowers, like yeah. what, is, what is going on here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's also uh, the, uh, the place of nature when it comes to health and well-being is very, very important. So the way our environment contributes to our, our mental health and our quality of life, and I think if Julius McDonald doesn't really have a sound mind, we can have all of this masterpiece. Yeah. So this is coming from the place of a man whose mind is sound. And then whose who's mental is also very, very solid. Well, so I feel like it was, it was very important to you know, have that conversation because we hardly talk about mm -hmm. men's mental health. Mm -hmm. It was you know, the other way around. Like yeah. they, it's just good that we able to just turn the table around. Like, yeah. Let's look at the other side of the coin and look at what is happening on this mm -hmm. side and how can we be more forgiving? And I love the, you know, there were certain statements you were making, they were very strong statements. It does not look like, um, you know, there's a bias. There's a bias. People look at men already with days. We just have this bias already about men. We have already drawn our conclusion, oh, men are scum and sometimes like that. <laughs> yeah, but, of course. And so they will generalize, they will isolate, and then they are dying. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also very important to be able to think of, I, mean, I know of the concept of gender parity. Yeah. Just think about, is that equal word? How can we be more forgiving for one another? How can we be human together? How can we support one another? I think, for me, this is what it's about. It's about mm -hmm. gender parity. Be on the same platform, be on yeah. the same place. Yeah. Good. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. So, Mr. Akunle does extensive work in the um, arts in health sector. He's the founder of the Arts in, Med uh, arts in Medicine uh, Fellowship and Project Nigeria. His, his work is amazing. You should look him up. So, I was uh, one of the courts, one of the um, founding, uh, founding courts uh, during the 
um, the first three years of the the formative period of the uh, fellowship and one of the works that one of the things that we were um, that was that was um, evident in the work that we were doing at the time was mental health focusing on mental health so it's quite interesting how that there's an undertone of that mental health in in my work yeah. so i was going to add that that this month being men's uh, mental health month um, was also one of the reasons why um, this this is happening AI. So that was one of the things that I talked about in uh, crazy. Yeah, we had that conversation, yeah, we had this, conversation morning. Yeah, this morning. Yeah. So yeah. when you said it, it kind of like just resonated. It yeah. was an omission. So yes. So yeah. This is also a call to um, be more active in in terms of um, feeding your mental health as a man um, as well. I remember when I had my um, when I had my breakfast some years ago. How <laughs> 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 I, I, I was crying a lot. And <laughs> I remember. Um, you know, bawling my eyes out in front of my dad. It was the first time that I was that vulnerable with him, and um, so and it was really um, surprisingly, he was not a hard guy, hard guy person. So and um, I I remember how that helped me also, like as a cushioning effect, and also the uh, men that I was surrounded by also were not judgmental of me, and that helped me too. It took a long time for me to heal beyond that uh, process, and the ways that I went about dealing with those things were just. Um, very um, unusual in a way. So, but eventually, I'm out of that mental space, um, and um, thankfully, um, I was able to create this body of work to that's appealing to people and that makes sense. Thank you. So, um, I guess we're at the end of this uh, particular session. I mean, it's always a pleasure um, to either be in or to be on this seat <laughs> talking to the artist. So, um, um, I'd like to thank Goma. Once more, um, you're doing a fantastic job of championing the arts in Nigeria. Uh, it's, uh, I, I, I don't know that I can add more than that, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it goes without saying. And I, I think artist talks like this are very, very important because um, beyond just seeing the work and appreciating it for its aesthetic value, there's usually some sort of substance to um, to the work that is produced. I also, I also personally think that on one hand, art can be art for art's sake, right? Just create, let it be fine, let it be there, let people see it. But when you have an artist whose um, work means something or is, whose work is trying to say something, it's important to have that conversation with the person so that the um, objective is amplified and, um, and then everyone else can go ahead to say, okay, you know what, I saw this. It's a lot more than you think it is, right? Which is how, you know, even operating in this world is. Like you see things on the surface level and then you realize that there's a lot going underneath. Um, so Julius, thank you for the excellent work you've done. Thank you I so mean, much. I would ask more questions <laughs> after this is over. So thank you everybody. Amazing. Yeah.